class, Professor Smith here. So excited to create a video on finding magnitudes of forces related to a sum of three vectors. In this example, suppose that the sum of the three vectors u, v, and w shown in the figure is the zero vector. If the magnitude of w is 195, find the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v. Carry your intermediate computations to at least four decimal places and then round your answers to the nearest tenth. Note that the Alex graphing calculator can be used to make computations easier. So let's go out to my iPad and get started on this problem. So I'm out on my iPad with a screenshot of the problem. Let's go ahead and label the magnitude of W as 195. And then I'm going to introduce my own little notation to make sure that we have the sign of the components correct. So let's capture that 195. And then because vector u is in the first quadrant, I know each of its components are going to be positive. So I'm just going to use a little ordered pair with plus plus. And then vector v, because it's in the second quadrant, then I know that it's going to have a negative for the x value and a positive for the y value. And then my vector w that's in the fourth quadrant, the x is going to be positive, but the y is negative. So I'll write that as plus minus, and that's for quadrant four. We know also that the magnitude of the vector times the cosine of the angle will give you the x component. And the magnitude of the vector times the sine of the angle will give you the y component. So we're going to use that to express u, v, and w. So my vector u is going to have component magnitude of u times the cosine of 26. And then the magnitude of u sine of 26. v is going to have the magnitude of v times the cosine of 20 of 39 degrees but because it's in the second quadrant I've got to make sure that I put that minus sign in front and then magnitude of v sine of 39 degrees and then w is going to have the magnitude of w but the magnitude of w is 195 and the x is going to be positive so it's going to be 195 cosine of 71 degrees and then the y is going to be negative so it's going to be minus 195 sine of 71 degrees now we know that the sum of these vectors are going to add up to the zero vector and the zero vector is zero zero so therefore the x components are going to add up to zero and then the y components are going to add up to zero so we have the following equation so our first equation by setting the x components equal to one another and notice that all of those x components have cosine. So magnitude of u cosine of 26 minus the magnitude of v cosine of 39 plus 195 cosine of 71. Those are all the x components that are going to equal the x component of the zero vector which is zero. We'll do the same for the y component. So for equation two, we have the magnitude, oh, that's a u, it looks like a v, let me fix that. So we have the magnitude of u sine 26, and then we have the magnitude of v sine of 39, and then we have minus 195 sine of 71, because remember w was in the fourth quadrant, the point on the terminal side, and so that's why the y value was negative. So we want to solve for the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v. So what I'll do is I'll let magnitude of u represent x and the magnitude of v represent y. So my equations will then become x cosine of 26 minus y cosine of 39 is going to equal negative 195 cosine of 71 degrees and so notice here that I've added uh, the opposite of 195 cosine of 71 to the other side so that's what I've written here for equation 2 I'll have x sine of 26 plus y sine of 39 is going to equal 195 sine of 71 degrees and notice that you have the cosine in the first equation for each one of the factors and you have sine in the second equation for each one of the factors because that was the y component now what's confusing is that we've used the letters x and y and so i don't want you to confuse the letters x and y with the x component 
we're just using those as variables. We could have used M and N, uh, but the reason why we use X and Y is because the Alex calculator uses X and Y, and so we want to make sure we don't get it um, confused. So just be careful that you're not confusing the X here with the X component of the vector. All right, so let's go ahead. This X here represents the magnitude of U, and Y represents the magnitude of V. But we're going to use the graphing calculator to solve this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for Y in each one of those equations. Solving for Y in the first equation, since it's negative, I'm going to move it over to the other side. And it'll become Y cosine of 39. Oops, I forgot the degree. And then I'm going to add the 195. Then dividing both sides by cosine of 39. And then the cosines will cancel. And so we have our first equation in terms of Y. Let's do the same for the second equation. So again, I'm going to subtract the Y sine 39 and subtract the sine of 71 times 195. So I have X sine of 26 degrees minus 195 sine of 71 degrees is equal to minus y sine of 39 degrees. And then I'll go ahead and divide both sides by minus sine of 39 degrees. The minus sine 39 is going to cancel. And we can think of that minus in the denominator is uh, can distribute to the numerator, and that'll make the first term minus, the second term positive, and this one positive. So then we'll have the following. We have here cosine 26, cosine 71 by the 195, and then in the denominator for the y component we had uh, sine of 39 and here for the x component we had cosine of 39. Not to be confused with this letter y and this letter x which represents the magnitude of those two different vectors. So let's go out to the Alex calculator and uh, find the point of intersection. So I've opened up the Alex calculator and then I'm going to select the y equals and then when I select or start typing in for the first equation what that's going to do is it's going to automatically put a check mark. So let me go back out to my iPad to make sure I grab the question correctly. So I'm going to put in the cosine one first. So it's going to be x cosine 26. So x. So notice the minute I put in the x, it became solid. Then I'm going to select cosine of 26. And there's actually a cosine button on the calculator. It says here that the calculator, does it say what mode it's in? So if I hit mode, it says that it's in radian, so I want to make sure I change that to degrees, because 26 was in degrees. And then um, there's more to my equation, cosine 26. It was plus 195 sine of 71. And then I'm going to double click, and that'll highlight the sum, and then I'll hit the division bar. And then I'm going to divide by, is that right? Is that supposed to be a sign? Let me make sure I got that right. Yeah, it is. And then sine 39. Hey, if you hit S, it puts in sine. Ha! I love Alex. It's so smart. All right, so now I'm going to copy this. No, I'm not going to copy it because they're not the same. All right, now let's put in the second equation. So the second equation is minus X sine of 26. And then I'll hit S for sine. I love it. 26 plus, or is it minus? Let me make sure. Yeah, both of them are plus. Plus 195. I thought it was minus. Let me make sure I copied it right. Oh, you know why? Because when I divided by a minus, it made this plus. Got it, got it, got it. So plus 195 sine of 71 divided by the sine of, uh, something's wrong. I copy this one wrong. These should all be cosines. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes so much sense. So I'll hit C. Hey, C puts in cosine. Cosine of 71. And this should be, oh my goodness. That is so smooth. If I hit the backspace, I wish they would make that feature available on the other calculator where you could hit the backspace and it gets rid of the trig function but keeps the angle. That's all. It's all good. So X cosine 26. 195 uh, cosine of 71, all divided by the cosine of 39. Then the bottom, second one was at minus x sine 26, 
195, and then sine of 39. Perfect. That makes sense. Sine of 39. Look at the beautiful math. We love it. The math is so beautiful. So beautiful. This symmetry. Oh, oh, oh. All right, so we're going to graph it. And when we graph it, we don't see anything on the screen. It's like, really, Stu? How am I supposed to find the intersection? Well, if you keep zooming out, and don't zoom too fast because the Alex calculator will lock up on you. Ah, I see one line. <gasps> there she blows. So at the bottom of the calculator, you can't see it. It's off the screen. It says OK. So now that I've selected OK, I can now find the intersection. Intersect. Ta-da. And it says select the first curve and the second. We only have two. It says do a guess point. And so they have a guess point at x equal to 0. But you could drag the guess point over. Once it turns yellow, it can be dragged. But you don't have to. It'll find the intersection whether you move it or not because it only has one point of intersection. When you have two curves, they could possibly have more than one intersection. So that's why you need to drag this puppy around. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit find intersection. There she blows. And um, they tell us to, I think, round our final answer to the nearest. Da, 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 da. Search for it. Wait for it. The tenth. Hot diggity dog. So we're going to round our answer to the nearest tenth. So using the Alex graphing calculator, we get x is equal to 114.0. And y is approximately equal to 213.6. And so we know that the magnitude of u is 114. And the magnitude of v is going to equal 213.6. Very good. Hot diggity dog. So now let's go ahead and put those answers on Alex. So 114.0, and then the magnitude of V was 213.6. We'll check our answer to verify that we're on the rock track. Ooh, that was quick. And we got it correct. So I hope this movie on finding the magnitude of forces related to a sum of three vectors has been helpful for you.